I'm Analda van der Walt. I'm a South African, living in South Africa all my life, um, many generations now. I live in a small coastal village. There's a photo of what you can see when you climb the hill just behind my house. Um, and I work with universities across South Africa, um, in Africa and, and outside of Africa to help researchers adopt technology in their research. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today, as we said, was uh, personas and pathways, which are two design elements um, that have different benefits in your project. It doesn't only help you to think about designing the right project, but it also helps you to communicate within the project and to your stakeholders about design decisions that you've made. And of course, it helps you to attract the right users um, and contributors and help them to stay in your project. So for many of you uh, are doing very different projects before this talk, I was I quickly looked at the list of projects again, it's so diverse. And some of you might be thinking, well, personas and pathways aren't really relevant to my project, but regardless of what kind of project you are doing, in open science, um, personas and pathways can really help you a lot. So I hope by the end of this project, you'll see, uh, at the end of this talk, you'll see a few ways in which you can use it. So you will need personas and pathways if you want users and or contributors. Um, and for all the projects that is in the OLS code, definitely this is what we want, right? Um, just very quickly, what are personas? Um, and very recently, I was going through a, uh, the process of creating personas for a project. And I was looking at various personas online, various resources. And I was stunned to see how many personas seem to be created to tick boxes, to, um, to really, really just not necessarily speaking to the people that might be coming to their projects. According to Mozilla, Persona is an imaginary user based on real world observations and understandings of actual uh, potential or current users, and in our case, also contributors. Um, but what's really important is that you have to know your audience. You have to know the people that you're working with um, to be able to create an accurate persona. And that's where data comes in. I think most of us um, in the school, definitely in the, in the OLS projects, are um, aware of the importance of data to inform decisions. Um, so maybe at the beginning of your project, you may not really know your users or your contributors. Um, and we'll, we'll speak a little bit more about that later. So your, your personas might not be that accurate. But as you go along, you can improve those personas as you get to know your users better and as your um, project grows in terms of diversity and voices. Pathways are um, ways for people to stay involved in your project. <clears throat> so you may um, you may have people coming in as developers, you may have people coming in as users, and what are, the, what are the things that will make them come into your project and stay involved? So not every project that come, not every person that comes into your project will necessarily take on a leadership role in the future. But how can you help people to see how they can be involved regardless of what their, what their resources, skill level or motivations are? And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. For me, a pathway is less about the picture on the left where there's this golden highway that takes you to where the sun shines behind the mountain. And it's more about something like a treasure map where uh, someone might look at the map and say, oh, I want to go, you know, have a look at the river. And then someone else might say, I'm really fond of forests. And someone else might say, well, I'm going to take the little boat that's out there and go across the ocean to the other side of the peninsula. Um, so there are many different ways that people can can be involved and there's no um, expectation of a leadership progression why are personas and pathways important and the way that i see it is um, personas will bring the right people to your project and pathways will help them to stay there 
uh, just getting back to when do you develop them, it's optimal to develop them at the beginning of your project. It might save you um, a lot of time if you are thinking about who you are developing this project for from the beginning and also what you want them to do there and thinking about your project in terms of how it will grow um, and what you will need as the project go, grow and what you can offer your users and, and your contributors. So typically you can develop uh, personas and pathways at the beginning. And then of course, as I mentioned before, use the data that you gather as the project grows, as new voices join your project to improve those. The next slide is um, just an image of the design thinking process. And I really like this one. I think um, there's a lot of questions here that might be useful to your projects beyond just thinking about pathways and personas. Um, and what I wanted to show here is that projects, I, I sometimes get the feeling that in open science, every project will just work, like it has to work, right? Because we invest so much time and effort and emotion into it. But the reality is um, sometimes projects, when you come get past the prototype stage, you have to sit back and really think about whether this is the thing that was going to be, you know, do solve the problem that you set out to solve. And just going back to the drawing board and looking again at your users, looking again at your, at your contributors, uh, who did you think you were going to attract? Who are you really attracting? And how you can edit that. I really, um, I really like this one. I think I'm going to be using this just in thinking about our own projects as well. But personas typically fit into after gathering the data through your exploration and empathizing um, at, in the step where you are defining what specific needs are that a person has that is coming to your project. One of the things that we've used in one of our projects, the AfriMap R project, to think about who our users and contributors could be are a, a mind map showing all the roles that they are in a project. Um, and the reason why I'm showing you this mind map is because as you Google for information about developing personas, you might cut across a lot of references that speaks about developing uh, personas from a company's point of view point of view to attract users and to get um, the right um, the right uh, elements into a platform or a software or a project for the users. So really mostly about users. But in open science projects and very uh, specifically in open communities and software development, we have not only have to think about our customer, the person that will be using our tool or our platform or will be joining the community as a community member. But we also have to think about personas and uh, pathways for people who are developing. I apologize for my dog barking in the background. Um, we, we have to think about our contributors, our community developers um, and other roles, not only the users. So this kind of mind map has helped me a lot to think about personas from a user point of view, uh, from the learner's point of view, and then also how can we attract uh, developers and what, what are we giving to them? How are we motivating them to join the project and what, uh, what reward are they getting here and how they, are, they can use being involved in our project to grow their own skills and networks as well. Um, another tool that I've used in, in a different project is the Escalator project. Um, here we used uh, existing monitor and evaluation, evaluation tools to figure out who our target, target audience may be. Who, who are we developing this project for? I'm going to talk about the project a little bit later uh, or just in the next slide. But first we started with um, using a fishbone diagram to define our problem very carefully. So asking a lot of whys, why do we see this problem? And the problem that we were seeing were, was in South Africa, we have um, several groups that are working in digital humanities and computational social sciences, but we don't have a community of practice. We don't have a community um, that 
get together that speaks to each other that shares knowledge um, in South Africa in, in digital humanities, computational social sciences. So that was our problem. And then we were saying, so what? Well, why do we have, like, why do we care if we have a community or not a community? What are the benefits of having a community of practice? Um, and needless to say, there are so many, many uh, benefits of having that community of practice. So it wasn't hard to, de to decide whether we should take this project. But then thinking about using the fishbone diagram, which I don't have an uh, image here, but you can Google for that, um, just to think about why are we seeing this problem? Um, and that really helped us to identify groups of people who could benefit from, from this project. And then after developing the, the Fishbone diagram, we used the theory of change, which is also a really, really good tool, especially for people who are developing um, community projects where, they, where you want to see a change in communities. Um, it's a really lovely tool to, to consider using in your project. Because as you are going through asking these questions, you really also start to identify groups of people um, which can inform your personas because you're asking questions in a different way. So just quickly, a theory of change, you take your project, your problem, and figure out what is the impact that you would like to see, which will address that problem. And then you work backwards towards what are the long-term outcomes that will lead to this impact. To have those long-term outcomes, what are the short-term outcomes that you should see? And then what are the outputs that you will need to see the short-term outcomes? And then what are the activities that you have to do to create the outputs that will lead to the short-term outcomes and so forth? And then really, what do you need as inputs to be able to do the activities that will lead to the outputs? Really work backwards from the big problem and the impact that you wanna, wanna see. And by doing that, it has helped us a lot to define groups of people um, and, and very specific, um, you know, I can see the, the personas now who we are going to attract in this project and support in this project and also who can help us, um, help, us help contribute and pr provide leadership in this project. Um, another thing that I want to point to you for those of you who are involved in uh, change projects, in community change projects, is just at the bottom of the slide, the time that it takes to see certain changes. Um, just for us to be realistic, I mean, the OLS projects are only three months, and some of, some of us expect to see changes that, that really in communities takes many years to take place. So just to be realistic and a bit uh, more uh so softer on on yourself when you are not seeing the change that you would like to see the theory of change for uh, the project is called escalator and it's uh, and one of the one of the flagstone activities of this project is to develop a digital champions initiative and what we realized initially we thought we'll just run one mentorship program very much like OLS there'll be a there'll be a mentorship program and we're going to open it up to people doing research um, in digital humanities and computational sciences and we're going to teach them digital and computational skills to do to use in their research but as we work through the theory of change um, and through the through the fishbone diagram we realized that there are people who um, who are not very comfortable using technology, even in day-to-day -day management of their, their work. Um, expecting someone to learn to code in Python when they haven't really used something like Google Docs or um, um, some of the other tools that, that you Zoom or other tools, uh, which means online learning is probably uh, a challenge and working alone, probably not part of many communities. So we developed um, a different type of, of mentorship program, and, and it's also not necessarily um, mentorship in the way that you see here in OLS, to address very specific needs. And in the slide, you can see that we now have six, six tracks, and we're busy developing content for those tracks and also partnering with existing mentorship programs to see how we can build on work that exists. Um, here's just another, speaking about pathways again, and I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, I found this, when I was thinking about pathways and this whole idea of 
not all pathways in uh, not all participants in an open project goes to leadership um i found this this lovely app by all trails which shows all kinds of different hiking routes in your area and then how difficult it is how long it is um how much elevation the time it will take you to finish it um and, and various other filters and i really liked it i thought it was quite um a good um uh, example of what i mean just to give you some numbers in a recent study um, on open databases in github they found that for the major open source database projects more than 19,000 people had contributed to a project's main repository at least once, which means like once in the entire life of the project. Only about 30% of them, of 30% people had contributed in the last year, which are called active um, contributors. And only about 20% had contributed more than three commits to a repo. And you can imagine for, for all of you working um, on your projects, how many commits have you made to your repo and how many other people have committed and just realizing that when people are coming to your project, they may only do one, one change, um, and that will be used. That will be useful to your project, and you should, you know, value them um, and and make everyone feel that their contribution is valuable, um, even if they don't go on to become very. I just want to show you this uh, image which I, which I found from uh, in the Microsoft, um, what is it called, the Microsoft Inclusive Design Manual, which I thought was really, really lovely. And I do share a link there on this slide. Um, if you design for people who have the biggest challenges to contribute or to be part of your project, you are just reaching so many more people who um, as you can see here, for example, if you design for someone uh, who, are, who is blind, um, you, you can all, also support people who may have a temporary problem like a cataract um, and also someone who have a situational problem like a distracted driver. So it's really, really, really beneficial to your projects to think about the most difficult way, uh, the, the, the biggest difficulty that someone will have to contribute. And if you solve that, you really make it easy, easier even for your most qualified contributors or um, participants. So in summary, um, as you'll see online, there are many ways to develop personas and pathways. And I do give a link just in the next slide to resources that's provided by OLS as well that um, can make you think about your personas and pathways. Um, there's a lot of information that you can put in there, and there's a lot of personas that you can develop for. Be realistic. Remember that open, open projects are often have limited resources. As long as I'm for the moment and that you would like to be to do more as the project grows, that should be okay. Um, and of course, your inclusivity will grow as your project uh, diversity grows. And there's just a nice quote, respects the one value. If we were all forced to pick one um, that designers should have, respect the user's time, dignity, ability, and means. And this was by um, a Facebook developer, Frederico mm -hmm. Francione. So now uh, what Malvika and them have asked is that you think about um, how your favorite open source projects have probably used personas and pathways to attract and retain you in the project. And then there's also um, uh, for this week, you'll have to develop your personas and pathways for your project. And there's a link there, and the links are also in the document. Um, I think that's a lot slide. Thank you very much. I went over time. Sorry. Um, yes, thank you for your time. <laughs>